can uh, can anyone uh, run Tube X successfully last time? Few. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So here's the fix. Uh, if you uh, slide number ninety one, like like what I said, um, if you wanna go and um, uh, see how how all all things work. Um, Okay, if you fix it, uh, like last time, uh, let me put this. If you fix it, you, you're gonna get all, all components of TFX running and you can run the whole pipeline. Uh, like, like what I described last time, when you try to do a uh, model validator, uh, you're gonna see like all this um, uh, model performance. Um, so it's just gonna go through it quickly, uh, just to just to recap. And today, what we gonna what we gonna learn is gonna be on serverless that I gonna describe. Okay. So if you fix the bug, here's gonna be the resulting that that you gonna get, right? So you, um, so after you fix all those stuff, right? You are gonna have this DAG running. Uh, if this all running and it's uh, successfully, uh, the light green gonna turn to to dark green right so you're gonna get all these uh components running and uh if you if you click can chart right you're gonna see like how how each component uh runs and how long does it take for each one okay um okay so after after you finish training after you finish uh tfx after you running this deck right uh, what you're gonna get? You're gonna get uh, the model. After you get the model, uh, you're gonna get this number, right? Like last time, you're gonna get the model number. And from the code, uh, you're gonna go to uh, model serving. If you still run the AWS instance, you're gonna get that model serving file. Uh, you're gonna put your, your model into the um, uh, TF serving file. This one, right? You can you can run the, your model on localhost. You just gonna put your your model here, right here, and uh, you can use that model to predict uh, on on iris problem, right? So this this is the um, API you gonna get. Uh, you just gonna replace your public IP here, right? And you can use it um, um, like in in such a way that you you like. Uh, okay, so that. That's to, to recap what we have last time, right? Um, did anyone try TFX on Colab? Google Colab. Good? It works? No, it works. Okay. So if you, uh, we, have, we have this Colab. Um, okay, so we have this. Um, this slide for uh, TFX on Google Colab, and the code also in this slide. Okay, if you if you go to Google Colab, basically it's gonna be the same step. Uh, I didn't go through last time, but just um, to point out what you have to do on Google Colab when you you want to set up pipeline, right? So so basically it's gonna be the same thing. You are gonna install um, all library like. Um, uh, Matplotlib, TFX, uh, TF serving, uh, setting up setting up environment. Uh, just gonna go, um, you know, just uh, shift enter on Google Colab. Nothing change. Uh, and then you're gonna do like uh, download data, which is the Iris Flower, the the basic one that we we use. Uh, this file is the same one, is the same thing like what we have on AWS instance. Right, we have we have this one called Iris Pipeline. So with this pipeline code on Colab, the same thing. We comment all components. If you want to run it on Colab, on Airflow within Colab, you uncomment. You uncomment all this code. Uh, so this will be chunk of code that we have to run. Uh, last time we have Iris Pipeline.py, and we also have iris utils.py if you remember two files 
right? When we try to set up TFX, so there are two files, uh, and then when you run all those files, right? We write the file into Colab instance. Okay. After that, you have you gonna run Airflow web server on Google Colab. Okay. So if you one thing to be to be point out, if you run um, uh, Airflow on on Colab. Uh, basically, you have to, you need public IP, right? You need public IP. Your Google Colab doesn't give you public IP. So we run ng-rock. You know ng-rock, right? It's a, it's a tunnel. This one. So basically, all code is there. You can, you can just run this at home, you know. So basically, we want public IP for our Google Colab instance. So the tool we use, we use this one called is called NG Rock. It allows you to have a public IP on Google Colab, right? So we run this. So here's the code. We run it on 80, 81 port, right? This one. And when you run this chunk of code on Colab, you're gonna get this. Airflow URL. So if you go to this Airflow URL, you're gonna get the same thing like what we have on AWS instance, right? So this is Airflow server that you're gonna have. The same thing. So the same thing, but it's it's all run on Colab. No need to pay for the instance. No need to set up AWS, but it's a little bit um, tricky, right? So so you're gonna have this deck and. Uh, if you want to to get log what happened on Airflow, you run this command. It's called tell tell how many lines you want to to see the the log, and you you said uh, tell minus fifty Airflow log is gonna show the latest the the fifty latest line on on the log in in Airflow, right? So you can you can um, run like uh, that. Like this one, so there's command. So if you want to view how many DAGs are running, you can run this command, right? It's gonna, like this one, is gonna return the the two latest DAG that running, okay? So this is the same thing, right? You have CSV gen, you have, you have this code, we uncomment one by one, the same thing, like what we did last time, uh, and you can run all this stuff, okay? So so you can uh, you can see like uh, this like um, schema gen statistic gen so okay and you can train the model you the same thing you can you can run all these components and train the model on on Google Colab okay and last one when you when we successfully run we also we also use ng rock to run TensorBoard. Right. So last time we set the port for, for TensorBoard on our AWS instance, but this time on Colab the same thing. But it's gonna be the link. This one, um, okay. It's gonna be it's gonna be the URL. It's gonna be ng rock URL like this one. So when you open it, it's gonna open um, uh, TensorBoard for you. Okay. And you can also analyze the performance. We also have this chunk of code that um, take the model that you train and and display it and visualize the performance like this one. Okay, the same thing. So so basically, you can follow at home and if you get stuck, have any issue with with collab, uh, just let us know and maybe you can comment on on uh, Facebook group as well. Okay, so so that uh, conclude TFX. Maybe it's like too fast for for someone, but trust me, just follow the slide. You can get there. Okay, so uh, like what I said, uh, we also have example. We also have collab example of TF serving. If you want to serve your your model uh, with uh, with you you develop model and you use uh, TF estimator, we have TF serving uh, as a Google Colab. You can go and and play with it. And if you have Keras, 
Keras like what we said, Keras does it. Uh, TFX doesn't support Keras. If you want to use Keras, you can use TF Serving. You can serve your Keras model. We have we have collab. You just go with uh, with the link. Okay. So that's gonna be the uh, uh, okay. Uh, last slide for for TFX and TF Serving. Um, any any question, any issue, um, uh, please come back to to um, to me, and uh, you can ask later or just comment on on um, Facebook group. Okay. So today, what we gonna do? Okay, it's that's quick. Right? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Today, what we gonna do? We gonna do serverless. Okay. So in the future, if you want to to develop the the model. Um, Oh, someone doesn't have slide. We, I think, I think uh, we use the same same link for slide. Okay, uh, so for serverless, uh, we see trend. Uh, it's gonna be like um, it's gonna um, it's gonna be like um, a big trend of uh, uh, serverless. I think what I what I saw uh, many startup, many company try to look at um, uh, serverless, how to deploy model without um, running instance. But what's the problem with, with running instance with your model? What's wrong? If you have if you have server, what's wrong? Why you need serverless? Any any answer? Uh, but you can also run your instance with API, right? Why serverless? Yeah, okay, okay, it's cheaper. Right? Okay, okay, so I can I can explain. Okay, so that's uh, partly right. So for uh for serverless uh basically uh i so this one just just to uh come from from one website just to compare right from from the uh like from business side and from from uh developer side right so basically uh you want serverless be because you want um uh your your model to be like uh you want quick deployment Right, you want it's really short, right? When you when you develop your model and you want to use it quickly, right? And actually, one also one thing, right? We we said it's cheap, right? So basically, if you if you run your model so lastly, you gonna pay when someone call your model. When you run instant, like what in in ratio class, you use big instant P two X large. How much you pay for it, you know, for one month? Instant with GPU. Right, it's 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 huge, right? Um, also, also the one that we we run last time, we run TFX. If you don't stop it, you keep on paying for it, and maybe it's not good for a researcher, right? <laughs> okay, so so for uh for serverless, um. What it goes is, is that it, it allows you to to um to to test your model, right? You have you have your model, you want to run it, and you don't use it oftenly, maybe maybe sometime, right? Uh, uh when you deploy your model, sometime during the day, maybe a lot of people use your model. During the night, no one uses your model, right? You have you have very inconsistent load, right, for your model. That's why you want you want serverless. And Many platforms like Google, Amazon, um, uh, Azure, they also have they they have serverless platform so that for AWS they have one million request limitation for free. So so for the free tier, one million request per month. So basically, you have your model, you deploy it, and one million. If you're a researcher, you're not gonna use it up, right? It's it's free right there, right? We need your credit card. <laughs> Right for 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 the free account, right? So basically the same thing for for developer. So I explain later. So uh, what we can do 
uh, if you if you see uh, all these term, right? So we when we talk about infrastructure, we we talk about like uh, IaaS infrastructure as service, right? We talk about like platform as service, right? PaaS. We talk about for now we talk about function and a service. So what we care we can so for infrastructure as service, you it's kind of like you run a barebone server. You don't have anything, right? You 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 put your server at your facility, your building, right? And you manage everything. So jump into um, uh, uh, function as a service. What you care, you don't care anything about all this stuff. You don't care about hardware, visualization, operating system, maybe Linux, container, uh, runtime application. You don't care, you just care about function. Right? You just care about your, your machine learning, deep learning code. You put it there and let it run for you. What you care is about code, right? You don't, maybe you don't, you don't like Docker. Like last time, right, we tried to do Docker. We tried to set up instance with uh, Ubuntu. We tried to run Docker, but this one, you don't need to care about all this stuff. You just care about function, right? And that function can be your, your machine learning and deep learning code, okay? So, so what we gonna do today, we're gonna do uh, serverless deep learning. What we care, we care about, we care only code and library, right? So we, we can, you're gonna have code and you're gonna have library and your library, you have to pack with your code when you want to deploy your, your model, okay? So uh, what, what's good about serverless is like, uh, it allows you to run like around like 20,000 run for, for $1. Uh, maybe maybe uh, you can can have more of this, um, and it's gonna be like pay as you go pricing. So you pay just uh, what you use, and it's it's I think it's good for for like early stage project and for for researcher. Um, uh, so so basically these two picture um, explain the different, right? So if you have um, last time when we run our model. Right, we we set up uh, EC2 instance. Right, we set up our instance. We may build our code into Docker image that push into ECR, right, and we serve the model using like uh, Amazon uh, Gateway API, right. So that's one service. But for for serverless, it's pretty simple. Uh, for raw S3, this one, it can receive request. You have request. You have API gateway that can manage function of your deep learning model or your machine learning model. So this one gonna manage um, and take care of all security, all those stuff for you, right? And you're just gonna care about your code and library and you put your code and library into Lambda function. So this can be TensorFlow, this can be Keras, this can be like uh, PyTorch, whatever, right? So you, you're gonna put your code here and your code gonna store on, on uh, Amazon S3, okay? So that's pretty simple, uh, simple model. So when we compare two things, uh, where it works and where it doesn't work, right? So first, um, if you want to deploy your model, so so Amazon call it like pet project, small small project, not not complex one. So uh, it has limitation. The RAM that Lambda can run around like a one point five gig. So your model cannot go grow bigger than that. So if your model too large, if you have a really complex model, watch out when we use serverless. If your model smaller than like 1.5 gig, it's okay. Okay, like so it, like graph and weight, all those stuff. Um, so if you want to make simple MVP for your star project, so this one's like your, maybe your research, right? And if you are, when it doesn't work, when your model consume a lot of data, so this be talking about production of, of real company. Right, um, so uh, so with with simple model, so this architecture gonna save you a lot. And yeah, like what I said, if you have have a complex model, if you have, uh, so server can be better. And and the last one, if you if you have um, uh, if you have a load that is pre pre uh, sporadic, right? Not not consistent load. Uh, you can you can use um, uh, serverless, okay? So so three so basically there are three things you need to consider: time limitation, uh, when you have when you get when your model get input, 
how long does it take to process the data and in, and, and make inference, right? CPU limitation and memory limitation. So memory gonna hold your your model. Okay. So uh, basically, this one is the is the um, just just like uh, the basic um, of the lambda function. So basically, for lambda function, it's kind of function, right? You you write code. Is called lambda handler, and you have return, right? So when when someone call API, your call your API, call your model, you're gonna process something, right? You're gonna put your code at um, implementation, right? To do implement, you put your code, and what you're gonna return, right? Maybe you return your result like um, uh, image classification result in in like uh, in JSON format, right? So so this is gonna be a very simple lambda function that we gonna we gonna try to do it. So pros, right? So uh, pros, it's very easy to deploy. No Docker, right? No Docker. No building up any image. Just your code. Uh, easy to connect trigger. Sometimes you want your model to to run. There are many trigger that you want to run. For example, you may have you you may have like um image that you push to storage and you want to make um, like a prediction of your image based on the image that put into storage that can be your trigger right you may put your image into s3 file right so so with the image that put into s3 it get automatically trigger your function and that function can run right so it's e very easy to scale and it's really cheap the bad thing cons is there's no local debug. What does it mean, no local debug? You have to push your function, deploy it, and test it on the cloud. Okay, so it's kind of like it's hard to to debug locally. Like if you want, if you have, uh, if you want to do some inference, um, uh, doing local is not 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 um, easy, right? So, so for this one uh, limitation. Uh, I think for this one, the limitation you you can check. Um, uh, I think based on what I saw on AWS is around like um, two to three gigabyte RAM. Uh, so maximum um, uh, five hundred megabyte disk. So this one for for your for your AWS account, uh, there are also limitation on on uh, how big your code can be. So so watch out. Okay, and one function. Like this one, one function limitation is around like 50 megabyte. So you can write your code and, and look at your code. It cannot exceed 50 megabyte when you when you try to deploy it. Um, okay, so that that's gonna be it. Uh, okay, so uh, without further ado, we can. Uh, I think we can we can create um, the function together and let you guys try. Okay, so you still have AWS account? Okay, still, you still have it, right? Okay. So from the slide number 169. Um, okay, we go to uh, console. console.adbs.amazon.com. And when you come here, okay. so now we had we had slide number one sixty nine, right? You can you can follow along. Okay, so when you come here, right? Uh, you're gonna search for um, you're gonna search for uh, lambda. This one, so it's gonna be like uh, lambda. Okay, so here's gonna be the the console for for AWS lambda. Okay, and then we're gonna 
Oh, I, I think I forget. You guys have to have this one. Uh, you have to get the uh, AWS account access, access key ID and secret access key before. Okay, so go back to, to AWS Management Console and search for IAM. Sorry. Okay, so the service called IAM. Okay, so you're just gonna create a new new account for for Lambda. Um, okay, with this, you can you can create user, and okay, you follow. Okay, you just add user, like this one, and maybe just enter your. Your user, like for me, Lambda. And you click on this one, these two. Programmatic access and console access. So with pro, uh, programmatic access, it's like um, you, can, you can use a terminal to access all servers of your AWS account. And for console access, normal, you just come here and, and log in at this user. Uh, okay. Good. <laughs> just, just add user. And then you go to permission and you can uh, you can uh, say create group and you can say like uh, lambda Okay, so so with this, actually, what we what we do, we gonna um, we gonna uh, okay. I think maybe a tip like this bigger. Okay, so basically, with your with your account, you gonna assign group to your account, right? And after that, uh, for each group, you have to give the access into AWS service. You can define which account, which group access to which service, right? For this one, maybe if we if we gonna do only Lambda, we may give uh, Lambda full access, right? So you can you can come here and you can say, oh, I gonna give this user to access all Lambda function. But for for demonstration, since we gonna access other service as well, so we just give this user as an administrator. It's not a good practice, but I just want to make sure that everyone not going to have problem. So basically, you can assign whatever that account really need, the service that they really need. So we keep administrative access, create group, and we go next tag, next review, and create user. So with this, you create new user that get access to all AWS services. Okay, not okay. If you have any question, maybe just uh, raise your hand and um, uh, maybe some TA gonna go and help. Too too fast? No. Okay, let me grab my. Okay, uh, you need more more minute or oh, it's good. So when you after you create it, you download the CSV, download and keep it for now. So it's gonna give you credential file. So with that, uh, with that credential file, it's gonna give you like uh, username. It's gonna give you password. It's gonna give you access ID key. It's gonna give you a secret access key. 
So this gonna be like uh, everything you need to access your account on on AWS. Okay. Okay. So we we add uh, slide number one sixty nine. Okay, maybe I give one more minute to for you to get the access key and ID. Okay, good or not good? <laughs> you you all get um key, right? Okay. Okay, so you have to also download it as well because because we're gonna use it later. Okay, so next step. Uh, what we're gonna do, we can we're gonna just uh, create very simple uh, lambda function, so that you know, okay, what is lambda? What is uh, serverless? Uh, so you search for on the console. Okay, on the console, you search for for lambda. On the console, you search for lambda. And when you open Lambda, you're going to see this page, right? So there are, four, there are four menu, right? Dashboard, applications, functions, and layers. I'm going to describe uh, later. OK. So if you see, uh, this is, so this, this one is my, 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 my Lambda, right? So it's going to tell you how many Lambdas you have and um, so how, so how big is your code that you store uh, for now? So I have some code. I put I push it there. Uh, my code storage around seventy five gigabyte. So basically, you can store like, uh, a lot of your code here. So so the maximum, the maximum for all of your code, uh, seventy five gigabyte. Okay, so you can store your your code here. So you call code storage. Uh, if you looked. Uh, down here, you you guys don't have any function yet, so don't wor no worries. Uh, I have some functions, so you can see on statistic, like uh, when you serve your models uh, on serverless, uh, what is the error rate? Right, what's the duration that your your function run? Uh, how many invocations to your to your functions? Okay, so you can can come here and see on statistic. Okay. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna just create. Okay, if you lost slide number one seventy, simple lambda function create creation. Okay, we're just gonna create hello world lambda function. So this should be simple enough for you to follow. Okay. Uh, okay. So what we're gonna do? So you can select runtime, right? So that's runtime. So you can select. Uh, Java, Python, Ruby, uh, Node.js, but for for us, we want to we want to um, try to deploy our uh, machine learning model, right? So we we choose Python as a runtime. So you can you have two options: Python 3.6 and 3.7. So we're just gonna choose tr uh, 3.7 for for our uh, Lambda function. Uh, you can name it. You can say like um, hello lambda. Okay, very simple one. You're gonna choose this one for row. Um, you're gonna you're gonna need to select execution row. So for execution row, you're gonna use existing row. Um, sorry, you can you can use this one. You can create new row. Okay, so you choose create new row from AWS policy template, and with this row, you can say like uh, lambda. You can say like my lambda admin. Okay, so this one should be should be bigger. Okay. So you can choose from uh, from this one, 
create new role from from AWS policy template right and then you can uh, choose uh, for policy templates you can uh, choose a uh, simple simple microservice permission okay again so we just gonna name our function name we select runtime python 3.7 uh, we choose the execution role um, uh, AWS policy template and we we name it my lambda admin and we shoot this one policy template so for for policies gonna be like um, um, so it's kind of like you for for some service you allow external service to read or to write so it's just gonna be like policy like for example like this one am i read only so you allow other people to read your your image your image on on uh, on uh, um, EC2, okay. So so it's, there's like uh, many many uh, policy. For example, like this one, S3 object read only. If you provide this one, your lambda gonna only read S3 object. It cannot write to to S3 bucket, okay. But okay, not too confused. Just select the simple simple microservice permission, and then you click create function. Okay, so now your function has been created, right? You're gonna have this one. You see, um, hello lambda. You have Amazon CloudWatch log and uh, Amazon DynamoDB, right? So this one for DynamoDB you're gonna like keep your uh, the execution from your from your from your lambda. Okay. Okay. So we have when we have this, so you can see your code. This one, right? So, you, so basically, for for um, for Amazon Lambda, it automatically generate code for you. You have two options: edit code right here, or you edit code on the on your code editor, like this one. You may have your code on your on your code editor, and then you write it, you push it to cloud. Okay, two options. So I gonna we gonna do it later together if we want to use like for example if we have if we want to deploy Inception V3 for for uh, our model. Uh, we have this code. We can push this code to cloud later. Okay, so so two options. Okay, so for for this. Um, For this function, we just gonna okay. So here's the code. Okay, let me let me go down here. Uh, you can set environment variable. So with this environment variable, it's gonna be like um, you can set key and value of some environment. For example, like you your your function may need to access some services, and that services you need you need maybe you need username, maybe you need password. You can you can provide environment variable here, and Okay. Uh, if you go down a little bit, you can see that you can change the memory size. Oh, okay. You can change your memory size of your of your function as well. So the limitation is three gigabyte, right? Like what I said, you have limitation of three gigabyte for your model to be deployed. So you have to know the size of your model, and you come and you change here. So now we use nothing. We we just uh, we just run simple Python code, and when you run your 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 model, you have to know what's gonna be the time out for your model. How long does it take for your model to inference, right? So you have to set this time out. If you set it too low, your model may not finish inferencing. It's gonna time out, right? No 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 result coming back from your model so you have to to set according to your to your model okay okay so we i think we ready we are just gonna hit the magic button right hit test and you have to name the event name like actually this gonna be like for example you can put json like input to your model right when you want to test 
But this one, we don't have any model. We just have very simple Python, Python code. So we're just going to name it like test and create. So we, that, uh, we create a test, right? So we create test, then we click test. Then you get this. OK. When you click test, you're going to get the execution result, which is the return of your function, right? The return of function, it just returns status code 200 and body hello from Lambda. You get these two, status code 200, body hello from Lambda. OK, so everyone follow? So what you're going to see here, you're going to see the duration. How long does it take to run your function? Like uh, 9.67 millisecond resource configure 128 megabyte, but you use only 53 megabyte of RAM, right? And build duration. So this one, they're going to time duration when they build you, when they, when they charge you for Lambda, this Lambda to run, OK? Okay, uh, easy enough? Okay, everyone follow? Okay, so that's gonna be like, um, so everyone's good. <laughs> good? <laughs> okay, so that that is very easy. Okay. Okay, so next stuff, right? So that one pretty simple. It's, it's like a, a pet example. Uh, next one, uh, when we want to deploy serverless function, like what I said, uh, serverless available, not only AWS, it's available for, for every cloud. If you want to use like um, Azure or, or GCP, so it's also available. Serverless, it's like, okay, maybe I can show you, what is it? Not file. Okay, this one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, this one. So for for serverless, uh, what it is? It it's a framework for you to deploy any any uh, serverless uh, function to the cloud. So this one, um, if you see, it support like every, every cloud, Azure, GCP, AWS. Um, basically, it's, it's just library that you can run on your, on your, on your um, laptop. Uh, OK, so what we have to do next, uh, we have to install serverless together. So to install serverless, Okay, you open terminal. So now I think everyone can can open terminal, right? So if you use window, I think maybe like uh, PowerShell, maybe do it. Yeah, maybe PowerShell. Okay, when uh, you just gonna type uh, npm install, npm install. G serverless because we we install serverless and we use serverless because uh, we gonna we gonna need to develop our uh, machine learning code right we we have our machine learning code we have the learning code on our PC right when we develop right or, or maybe in collab somewhere we need serverless to push our code. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's that's one requirement. Okay. Sorry, I, for, I forgot to tell it. Okay. On your on your on your laptop, you have to download Node. If you if you um, have an install Node, you go to this link. Uh, just go to the website. Uh, 
just click it and install on your on your Mac or your Windows or your PC before you can run this command. Or maybe just go to nodejs.org. It's gonna detect uh, your operating system. Uh, just go and download like this one. Uh, maybe um, uh, LTS. It's around like eighteen megabytes, so it should take like some time. Maybe like few few minutes. So after you install Node, you gonna you just gonna run these two command uh, npm install g serverless. Okay, so af after Node it's installed, you just gonna run these two command npm install serverless, and um, that's it. That's just two command. So if you if you successfully install it, it's gonna be like uh, you can run this command um, serverless version, and it's gonna it's gonna give you the version of serverless that install. So when you uh, after you download Node, you're just gonna uh, click it install Node. It's it's gonna be very really straightforward. Just uh, uh, go and just click next and install. Okay, so while while we are waiting for for um, everyone to install Node, right? Uh, just gonna uh, jump to to next slide and just gonna tell you guys like uh, what we're gonna do uh, so that we uh, okay not to be lagging like time. Uh, okay, so for for uh, deploying Lambda, right? With uh, our code, if we have if we have a uh, uh, code for deep learning, right? Uh, okay, so basically, what we're gonna have, we're gonna have like uh, we're gonna prepare uh, two files. Okay, so for for the first one, first one we we gonna prepare the 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 file called serverless.yml. Okay, so for serverless.yml, it's just gonna be the configuration file. It's very simple. Uh, you gonna tell uh, the provider what's gonna be the provider. In this in this case, I put AWS, right? So you have AWS as a provider. Which region you want to deploy your 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 serverless function? Uh, this one called AP Southeast one is Singapore, right? You gonna set up runtime, which version of Python for your for your code? Uh, memory size one twenty eight, and timeout. You gonna set up the timeout. So that should be it for your for your. It's it's called cloud formation file. Okay, it's it's YAML file. So with this file set up, it knows where to push your code to. Okay. Second step, you're gonna need to prepare your your library, right? So for example, uh, in this example, I use um, I want to deploy Inception V3 that I developed in TensorFlow. Okay. So with this, uh, you have to save libraries. All libraries that needed for your for your uh, TensorFlow function, you have to put it here. Okay, so so you have to put all function here. For example, like uh, in this one, I have uh, I have NumPy, I have uh, TensorBoard, I have uh, TensorFlow, uh, and uh, that's gonna be one file called index.py. That's it. Okay, index.py and functions. So that's gonna be your code. And after you have that, you run one command. 
on your terminal to push function and libraries into the cloud and that's it that's finish the deployment should be really simple if you if you can install node okay so okay we have three things config file uh, serverless.yml yml file we have libraries you need to know what libraries needed for your code and this one called index.py which is the lambda code you are you are you are maybe your your tensorflow inference code okay so this one the example okay just just um, look at this to to un understand first uh, oh by the way I, I put the link to download this code on the first page on the serverless section so you can you can download the code if you go to my my github uh, link Okay, so okay, here we are. Uh, this one is the everything you need for uh, serverless deployment of your, your of your deep learning model. Uh, if you see this, there are folders. Folders are libraries needed for your code. Okay, we have one file down there, index.py. That's where you put your your Keras, your TensorFlow code into that file, and we have the file, the last one, last one on on this screen, called serverless.yml. So this one, you tell you have to tell it where to put your code. Okay. Okay. Let's open one by one. Serverless.yml, right? So you set up. So this one, you set up where do you want to put your code? Your, your provider may be uh, Azure. Your, your provider may be uh, GCP, Google Cloud Platform. You have your region, right? Singapore, runtime. And sometimes your model has to get um, image, right? Sorry, your model gonna be maybe store on S3 bucket, right? You have you have your your model like uh, Inception V3 model. It store on S3 bucket. You have to allow your lambda to go and grab your model, right? Your model can be like one gig, two gig, right? It store on S3. You have to allow lambda to go and grab it, okay? Uh, like this one, uh, allow S3 to list object to get object. So that's it. For uh, that's it for your sorry for your solace.yml. Uh, these are the, the libraries and okay another file called index.py. So if you remember, we have we have function right. We have function on on uh, AWS function right. That simple one. We can replace that simple one with this one. Uh, with this one, uh, so if you recall, okay. okay. So if you recall, this one uh, we have we have one function called handler, right? So we have we have one main function called handler. So when uh, anyone make API request to your lambda function is going to call this function It's going to call handler function right other function is going to be a uh, helper right so we have i can i gonna talk about the, uh, the function later so these functions call call helper functions right you're gonna uh, get object create graph create transfer graph you download it you gonna run inference on image um, something like this so so it's gonna be you need to call the helper function, right? So, okay. With this handler, right? So when the when the when the lambda function is called, it's gonna call this handler. Uh, handler gonna, okay. Just briefly, it's gonna 
is gonna if you if you forward with with my code uh so with this one okay so basically it's gonna go and get uh my my tensorflow uh model from s3 so you see i have this one i have like uh, uh inception v3 which is trained on image net right so i have this one uh pb uh txt right so i have like um uh the file that store like uh label mapping um so basically this code gonna go and get model get um get the mapping from 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 s3 and after that it's gonna look for it's gonna look for the parameter if i have image that i want to inference it's gonna look for my url if my url has linked to the image that i want to inference it's gonna it's gonna take that uh image and do inference this one and do inference on this one okay and what is gonna return is gonna return a uh, body which is the prediction uh, which is the inference prediction on on the image that I provide okay this one so with this code if we don't have any any uh, parameter on URL is gonna it's gonna provide the default image but if you provide URL is gonna use that URL and make inference on that image URL okay you can see what I talk about later okay so here briefly on the code let's come back okay so we we pre uh, we have index.py we have the um, we have serverless YML right config file and we have libraries uh, so this is what I talking about the first one serverless.yml to set up where you want to deploy your your function and uh, and you have your code and this is gonna be the steps that you that you um, that you push your code into lambda function so basically if you if you successfully install serverless you just gonna you just gonna uh, run one line called serverless deploy. After you serverless deploy, you 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 gonna have your function on on uh, AWS Lambda. Okay. Okay. So let's do it together. Not install. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, hi. <laughs> huh, hello. Uh, can you push only? Three point two. This one. No. Uh, the, uh, the project seem to be the the like uh the whole project is too big to for cloning can you push all 3.2 to github oh you mean this one right yes oh it seems to be it's, a, uh, <laughs> it's too large Just uh, three point two. Yes, yes. Oh. Please. So what happened when you click download zip? Oh, okay. It's like ah, got it. <laughs> okay, it has yeah. it has the model. Yes. It has the model. Sorry, sorry. So far, just one percent. <laughs> okay. Okay, so. This should be okay. I push only lab one, so this you can you guys can can clone it. So go to this, uh, go to this link.
just pretty much like the same one, but you can you change it to to MLRS serverless. So GitHub slash my account and slash MLS underscore serverless. Uh, you can get a code for lab one, so it's not bulky. It has only few files. Okay, so I'm gonna put it to slide. Can I put to the slide? If you have my slide, you can just come and click this one. But if if you can download the whole thing, it's good for you. Just no, just maybe just keep it cloning, keep it downloading. Okay, so so I think everyone has the just go to a link. You can just download or you can clone if you like. Maybe just download zip file. It's a small one. Okay, go back. Come back to lab one. Okay, now uh, when you open uh, lab one, so so when you when you download it, you can. Uh, you can open the folder, right? So you have lab one. You can open folder in any any um, code editor of your choice. This one. So when you download it, uh, just just pick any editor. Uh, you don't really change the code just just to see it. Any any editor will do. Maybe Notepad also. <laughs> if you don't have. Okay, two files. We just gonna try to do uh, push uh, serverless to to AWS. After this, should be easy if you get code. Okay, so we have index.py. Uh, we have serverless.yaml, right? Um, so basically, uh, with this one, we just gonna if you have, if you have, um, so for serverless dot uh, yaml, you gonna what you want to change? Maybe you want to change your your the name of your serverless file. So you can change name here. Maybe like for me, hello world. Make my name. Okay. So when you change it, so now we good to go. We have node install, right? So you're just gonna go to your, you go to your folder, right? So you you gonna go to the folder that you that you download. For me, I'm inside lab lab one, right? So this is gonna be the path to your to your folder. Window just CD, right? Just CD to to this one, and then uh, check whether serverless is installed. Serverless. If it's already installed, it's gonna return the the version, and then uh, one thing you have to do uh, if you remember the slide. So before before we deploy, uh, just go back to the slide.
So we are at uh, slide number one this one seventy six. Okay, one thing. Uh, copy this one. Uh, before you can deploy any serverless function, you have code. Um, basically, you have to configure it. You call serverless config credential, and then you you provide your key, right? You provide your AWS key and your secret. That's it. One time, just one time. After that, serverless deploy, and then we can we can look at our TensorFlow code. So for me, can I can copy this and open my my editor, and I can say serverless config provider key, right? I can open the file that I have before with my AWS Lambda. This one, if you download it, it's called credential, and you're gonna put secret dash that secret and copy this one copy this one secret access key so okay this one is one time set a one time so it knows uh so it knows that okay uh you are authorized you are authorized to push your your code to to AWS. Okay, slide one seventy six. If you get if you get lab one code, it's good. That's good enough. Okay, then you hit enter. Oh, I I already have um. I already have my my um, credential, so I'm just gonna override one. So if you run the code, it's gonna say serverless setting up AWS. That's it. Okay. So everyone got this? <laughs> so, no. Uh. So how many people get serverless install? Serverless, okay, quite a few. So if you have serverless install, you just run this command. Right, you just run this command. It's gonna call set up AWS, that's it. This one, your, your credential that you download when we create account. We create account, we get this. So if uh, you haven't installed, um, if you haven't installed serverless, you just um, run this command. After you install node, npm install g serverless. One line, just just one line. Enter to your PowerShell or terminal. Okay, so uh, if someone, if you get to this point, you set up AWS account already, uh, one command you have to run. So after you, after you set up account so that it knows it, it uh, authorizes you to push the code, you just run one command, serverless deploy, that's it. It's just one time set up. After that, you deploy whatever you want on serverless. Serverless deploy. Super simple. Okay, so we're going to run inside lab one. We run serverless deploy. Oh, my name is not valid. It doesn't allow me to to do this. Hello, her underscore waradong is not. It doesn't allow me, so I have to come back and change. 
no hyphen, no special character. So I do it again. So well, let's deploy. You see, it pack packaging service. It um, like see um, like adding dependencies. So we our function is very simple function. We don't need any library. We don't have any TensorFlow code yet, right? We don't have any machine learning code. We just have code, right? That returns something. So we don't we don't have to include any libraries, okay? So so we deploy uh, just simple function. So if you see my screen, uh, when I say serverless deploy, it upload my code to Amazon S3. Uh, so my code gonna be inside Amazon S3. If I have if I have uh, my model um, all the way, it's gonna go to S3 as well. Lambda gonna pick up uh, from from there. So you see your your code is packed in a zip file. This one, right? And that's it, right? So you see, uh, stack update finish, service, which is the uh, lambda function called hello world, uh, world on my name, uh, get deploy. That's it. You can, if you finish, you come to this point. Uh, you can go back to Lambda, click function. Uh, this one, 45 seconds ago. This one. My code, nothing. It, it's a simple function, right? Five, uh, five, um, like around 500 byte, right? It has nothing. Right, but for my deep learning code, it's like sixty megabyte. Okay, so this is my function. So I can I can go click it and test it. Right, I can come here and test. Maybe like even name test. Click test. And yeah, it's hello world. That's it, right? So my code, this my code, just return hello world, right? This my code index.py. Okay, so so that that serverless. Next, next one gonna be uh, okay. I give maybe like two, two more minutes uh, for you to, to try. Uh, if you have any question, maybe get stuck on something. Maybe raise your hand for for TA. Okay. Next one gonna be, <laughs> next one gonna be the. Uh, probably look at time. Maybe the last one. We gonna deploy deep learning together. So you see like the whole process. How to get deep learning to. To 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 serverless. Okay, you just you just have to have lab one code and and run this command and run serverless deploy. That's it. Three step. Basically. Okay, while, while we are waiting, I'm just gonna uh, keep on talking on, on this. For if you're curious how many types of serverless, there are three types. First one we call deep learning. Uh, you can do deep learning API, deep learning machine learning API. 
So for deep learning API, if you deploy the, the model, it costs you around like what? Uh, 0 0.0005 0, 0, 0, dollar for one image. It's pretty cheap, right? It's really cheap. Comparing to when you run your instance and you have very few calls to your model, right? So next one, uh, API is good if you want to share your 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 model with uh, somebody else, right? Or you want to create like real time website, whatever. Uh, second one is called deep learning batch processing. You have very constant load calling your model, right? You may trigger from from stream of action. You may put like you may take picture, right? Every one minute, and you push to your model, right? Every one minute. You want to classify whatever you see, right? You're gonna do like you're gonna have batch processing, right? SQS called simple queue service. So it's gonna queue your request, right? So if you have very constant load, you use you make batch processing. Uh, last one, uh, you can create like a workflow. For for workflow, you can create like if you want to deploy your model and you want to do like um uh like A B testing or some or something, uh you can create your own deep learning workflow. So uh for the, for the last one is gonna be a little bit deep, but you can go and and, and see uh how how it works. Okay, so if we if we want to deploy uh this one, if we want to deploy uh, deep learning, for example, this one, uh, MNIST, um, uh, that you use like uh, TFKRAS to, to do like um, uh, training in France. So this very simple uh, model, right? I think everyone here can, can do it, right? You have, um, so, so basically you, ha you have this code for, to train, save uh, model into H5, right? And then you you have a uh, code to load. Uh, load your basically you can load your model right. You you have the save um, save uh, uh, weight right. You can load your weight and you make um, inference. Um, okay, so so basically you can have that kind of code right. Uh, and then you when you want to um, uh, uh, take it for inference right. You can uh, for example like this one. Uh, we're gonna have another code. This one called uh, node lookup. Basically, it, it does nothing. It's just gonna load uh, weight from from exception v3 uh, that train on ImageNet, and it has it also has synset because you also want to map synset with the with the real label, right? And then you use that graph that you load to do a prediction like this one, right? Prediction session run, right? So basically, this is gonna be the code that you typically you you um, you you run right uh, on TensorFlow on Keras whatever. So we're gonna have this kind of code, right? We have weight, uh, maybe like uh, graph and weight, maybe dot pb, maybe dot pb text, and the scene set, right? You're gonna have this file uh, when you as an artifact when you train your model. Uh, okay, so. Uh, when we store the model, when we store, we we gonna have this file. Uh, when we store model, uh, maybe we gonna install inside the deployment uh, network. Um, so, uh, what I mean by inside deployment network, maybe like uh, it's gonna be like uh, ad hoc storage on on Lambda itself, a uh, very small one. Uh, you can also save your file, your model on on S3 bucket. This you're gonna keep larger file, larger um, uh, uh, your larger graph, larger uh, larger weight of your of your model, right? You keep on S3, or maybe your model gonna be somewhere uh, on on any server, right? When you use like for example like uh, TF Hub, right? Maybe uh, you store model somewhere, or you take like pre-trained model, you can take model from HTTP or FTP if you have if you have server as well. So uh, if you look at speed, because you have to load your, when you have this uh, inference, right? You have to load your, your, your graph and your weight, right? Uh, it takes time. So on FTP, it's gonna be slowest. If you keep it on deployment network, on, on Lambda, it's gonna be the fastest, okay? 
Okay, so here's the limit, like what I, I tell you. Uh, code, uh, lambda limit, gonna be uh, around like uh, 50 megabyte. So if you see that's problem, when you want to deploy the TensorFlow, because your TensorFlow archive around 40 something megabyte, right? Your, your TensorFlow archive, uh, your NumPy maybe like around maybe like 16 something megabyte. So basically when you, when you have your code you want to deploy on serverless, you have to think about this limitation and what you have to do, you have to remove file which is not necessary. Like for example, like um, um, you have to you have to remove .pyc file that you don't need. You have to remove uh, other folder like visualization, other library that you don't use. So you don't you don't want to you don't want to put all library. You don't you don't want to pack everything here. So this can be so this library can be something that uh, very uh, important, very necessary for your for your model to just doing inference. So you have to clean it up. So it's a little bit tricky, not unlike uh, when you deploy on server that you don't care about anything, right? Um, okay, the same step. Uh, we're gonna deploy a TensorFlow model on, on Lambda. So this we don't have time to train. So we're just gonna use the pre-train, right? If you have your code, you just plug your code here, plug libraries, plug, plug your code. Uh, and try to deploy on 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 the serverless. Okay. So, how many people have this? Um, can can clone the whole folder, five hundred megabyte. Okay, a few. Okay, okay, quite quite like half. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, let's try this together. Uh, okay, we gonna okay. I can talk about lab one, but we do lab uh, three point two. So basically, you have your code. You go and you create bucket on Amazon S three because you gonna put all the files there. So you gonna pack the file. You gonna you gonna make zip file, right? You gonna have uh, what you gonna have. You gonna have this. Um, you gonna have this lab, right? You gonna have this code. You want to pack all these things in zip file. Okay, you pack this thing on to zip file. You upload. So what you're gonna do next? Uh, that's so. This one is your code, right? This one is your code. When you want to do like inference, so this one, next one, you have to upload the model. So you have ImageNet model. So you have your model, which is separate from your code, right? So you have your code, which is in zip file. You have your your model file, which very the big one that I I gave you five hundred megabyte. Is uh you have to upload it to S three. After that, um, okay, you already have you already have uh, IAM row for lambda, so just skip it. So you already have this, should be fine. So if you recall, we have our Lambda function, we have this, right, simple function. We just gonna create like, like what before. Uh, we gonna, sh when you deploy your deep learning model, we gonna come, come back here and change the memory. So this gonna be the maximum memory for your model. Your deep learning, when it does inference, is gonna take a lot more than simple function, right? You have to increase this limit and increase the timeout. And then you can uh, tell the Lambda function, where is your code, right? So this gonna be like um, the place where your code is, right? So it's stored in S3. Uh, then um, when, you, when you save, like this, when you save, it's gonna, it's gonna return, it's gonna return uh, the result from inferencing. So this one, uh, basically I use, um, 
I have this for for the code that we have. Okay, we have we have this uh, panda input image uh, that we we uh, in lab uh, three point one. We just um, we just write a um, uh, function that do inference uh, using uh, Inception V3 on on this image. Okay. So that's why you you see the result. It predict uh, giant pandas with score like point eight nine. Um, So that's um, that's lab three point one, but it's the same thing. So we we what we're gonna do? We're gonna do lab three point two for the lab three point two. So with that code, it's uh, you cannot change anything, right? When you run it, it it take it take uh, the uh, default image and put to your to your model, right? So with lab three point two, the same thing, but uh, what I change is like. Um, So what what I change is like uh, you can actually what you uh, the code that I change uh, you can have your own uh, API for serverless and uh, what you can see here is like uh, if you if you Google some image from from Google whatever image right and um, uh, give the URL of of the image like this one take URL. And uh, enter to the to the browser. It's gonna send this request to to serverless, and it's gonna you're gonna get inference like this one, pack doc, right? It, it's uh, so model is working for for this one, right? Uh, so if you if you get all this done, you can just um, replace the model with your your model. Okay. Okay, let's do it together. Lab three point two for those who has uh, five hundred megabyte GitHub. Okay. Okay. So for for your code, uh, let's open the code. Um, just come here. Um, Okay, so we're gonna deploy it and come back to ex um, explain it later if you have time left. Okay, uh, lab 3.2, right? So this is the code that you saw. Um, so this one is the uh, serverless um, setup. Uh, okay. Maybe. Oh, sorry. Uh, four point two. So it should be should be four point two. So you open the folder. Uh, four point two. And. Okay. So what we can do? We can check. Uh, first. Uh, first we check the. Um. Uh, serverless.yml okay, yeah. uh, okay so we uh, we go to lab 4.2 so basically you can uh, open this one and uh, okay so what you can do you can uh, you can open uh, this folder and you can uh, uh, highlight everything. Uh, and uh, create a zip file like this. So basically, you're gonna have this uh, zip file, right? And so we're gonna we gonna put. This one, so we're gonna rename it. Like uh, you can name it like uh, deep learning. Uh, 
so will this. Okay. This one. So you see this uh, folder is around like uh, 50 megabyte. Okay, so I, I can I get it, I put it here. And um, you're gonna have another folder where you keep all your, uh, your scene set and your uh, model, right? This one, classify image graph. I have .pb file, I have all this stuff. So, so this one gonna be your code to inference. So this one gonna be your model. Okay, so you have, you have uh, two file. Zip file you create from lab 4.2, right? You highlight everything, uh, compress, create a zip file. You cannot do, um, okay, somebody might ask, can, can I do this? Can I click lab 4.2 and compress? Uh, not sure about in Windows, but if in Mac, it doesn't work. So you have to highlight every file and create a zip file. Okay, so you have these two. Okay. Um, on the uh, Lambda console, uh, we come back to the Lambda. Uh, okay, so we come back here. Um, so what we have to do, uh, so now we're on the slide number uh, uh, 198. Okay, actually we don't have time. <laughs> so so we're running out of time, so I can do this way if it's better. So you come to, so the easiest one, you have 3.2, go back 3.2. Uh, the, the thing that I try to do, you can follow slide and do it later. So you come to 3.2, right? So you have serverless file, you have index.py that you, you have your, your TensorFlow code. Uh, then you're just gonna do serverless deploy. That's it. That should be easy. So you come to, um, then I'm gonna explain code later. Okay. So you go to the folder like uh, lab 3.2, lab 3.2, and then you um, just change the serverless YML name. So doing this way is maybe easier. Lab 3.2, uh, change the name of your serverless. And then you're gonna um, enter serverless deploy. Okay, so it's gonna it's gonna deploy your function. And okay, so did actually it's is your uh, your your TensorFlow code that you can uh, put here. Also, I think also Keras, uh, should be, it should support Keras as well, if we use Keras. Um, yeah, so the, the main function is here, handler, right? So this is gonna be the step. Uh, what you're gonna do, you're gonna download five from S3, download graph, create graph on what um, whatever file you download and make inference uh, on the image from, from your graph. Okay, so when you call serverless deploy, it's gonna, um, 
it's going to push uh, your model all the way to the cloud. Okay, so I'm going to show you here. Okay, so since we're running out of time, so I just gonna, I just gonna show you this one, but you can, you can go and follow, you can go and follow the slide. So if you push your deep learning code to the cloud, it's gonna be here, and when you want to have, when you want to have your your API deploy like this one. So basically, when you deploy, you want to get live API. Right, you want to get live API that you can can share with other researcher, can share with your your colleague. Uh, you're just gonna add this box called API Gateway. So for API Gateway, AWS manage um, API for you. So it's gonna create um, it's gonna create um, this URL, which is the the it's kind of like a public IP, right? It's gonna generate this for you, and uh, Whatever you want it to do, you can you can add um, uh, you can add like a parameter to URL so that you can you can make inference on 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 any image on on your your model, right? Okay, so I, I just gonna uh, try this. Okay, so I have I deploy my model, I deploy my deep learning model, and I have API gateway. Okay, it's in the slide. Just follow. <laughs> it's nothing, not really hard. I have this API endpoint that's gonna call my Inception V3 model, right? So basically, I just gonna I can give the URL, right? I just gonna find any image. Okay. Okay, maybe host, right? Okay, if I have this um in the email tab, probably you just have to get the absolute URL for the image. No, not this one. You want to get like dot dot png. Like this. I think I should get it. Okay, finally. Okay, maybe you get like dot jpeg dot png. Uh, so this is your API. Keep the URL. So this is gonna be the image that uh, your model gonna take for inferencing. So basically, it's gonna call my my deep learning API. Okay, what it give? Whip it. Why is it? I don't know what is it, but yeah, it's it's supposed to be working. But yeah, you train model for this. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. So model is up to you, right? Or uh, okay, maybe like, what works on exception? Okay, I have another panda. No S, right? Ah, oh, to open me. Okay, <laughs> doesn't matter. Okay, so so that uh, if you if you have this, uh, you just replace um, the parameter, and that should be that that should works. And actually, you can customize as well. 
So it's not only the, the parameter, you can uh, uh, make the API receive post requests and you can upload image and, and make it uh, to, be, to be working. So, so this is going to be the workflow. I don't have time to go and touch on, on Azure, but if you're interested on Kubernetes, uh, don't forget I saw some people uh, grab the free um, uh, credit. So you can you can still get free credit. It's it's free for you, but uh, hurry, please use it. You can. <laughs> I think I I'm, I don't know when Microsoft gonna gonna cancel the code, but yeah, just just claim for it if you maybe you it um, maybe it can be useful for you to train some model if you if you still have something to do. Uh, yeah, just just uh, go um, along the the slide. Uh, is Basically, it's a, it's a good one for you if you want to deploy a uh, model on Kubernetes. So there are also like uh, performance testing on on this API. So if you if you run it, it's kind of like on the uh, at the end of the code, I did load test. For load test, I kind of like uh, write a synchronous function. So it's gonna storm your API with like thousands of requests so you're going to see how it works and how um, if you want to scale your applications you want to have something extreme uh, this can be helpful to to run on many doctors managed by kubernetes um, okay so yeah so this one so you're going to see uh, if you go through this uh, slide you're going to see kubernetes run um, like maybe I, I said maybe four instance running or four instance receiving uh, real time requests. You can see like what's happened, and and the performance like. So for this one, I inference maybe thousand image, and it takes the average time taken for for each image one one ninety seven milliseconds. So it really fast, thousand image taking around nineteen nineteen seconds. So you can. Go and, and see like uh, if you want to scale your your applications. Uh, okay, so it doesn't have time to to go to the edge, but yeah, a slide for the edge is there. So basically, for the edge, you have model, and you push it to uh, there's Amazon that has uh, something called green grass. You can train model on the cloud, kind of like pushing to lambda, but you push to the edge. Uh, on green class, uh, slide is there for you. And uh, if you, for from my understanding, you're gonna train model on different um, uh, platform. You can train model on TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, uh, Scikit-Learn. But if you, you're gonna see that there are many ways to to deploy the model, right? To get model from scratch to production. Uh, there's two called Onyx, right? If uh, you haven't used it before, maybe you try it. You can convert model back and forth from PyTorch to Onyx, from Onyx to TensorFlow, uh, whatever. So this is gonna be very useful uh, too for you. Uh, okay, <laughs> that, that should be it. Sorry for, for a very really long session, but yeah, that should give you some, some hands-on. Yeah, so based on this slide, you have your model, just plug it in. And now you get your model in production. Thank you so much.